Don't roast me, okay? I'm on a time crunch. Hey you, is Katie you. Can you see? Today I'm hosting a Friendsgiving at my place and so you might infer that I'm putting together like a little bit of a goodie bag for my guests. It's crazy having an apartment and like hosting things and having a kitchen and cooking meals for people. It's so freaking weird how adult it is. I think about how I used to spend time with friends when I was 13 and it'd be, let's meet up at the mall and eat at Panda Express and go window shopping. And now it's like, come over to my place for a nice dinner. Um. Weird, weird, weird. But anyways, a lot of brands give me so many products and I definitely use them, but I can't possibly use all of them in my lifetime. And so I figured I'd extend the goodwill and pack a few things for my lovely friends that are coming over later. These are all products that I love and I want my friends to enjoy them as well. We're gonna get to packing those. I'm so excited and yeah. Alexa, play the album Red Taylor's version on Spotify. Alexa, raise volume by two. Let's go outside We can hang out on the beach with our friends Okay, now that the goodies are all packed, I am gonna hop on a quick call with Dr. Seema Yasmin from Stanford and she is an Emmy winning journalist and doctor, especially with the holidays coming up. It's a time of traditional unity and gathering and connection and so I thought it'd be quite fitting to call her today. We're gonna talk about COVID and how it has really, really impacted our social connections and how we view each other as human beings. She is somebody that I really, really wanna ask about how we can tackle the ongoing divisiveness and resentment that is happening between communities. Let's go. I'm a little bit nervous, but it's okay. Oh, be. I'm really excited to pick your brain today. COVID has been something that has impacted greatly how we view our social connections. And I think that is like the main thing that I wanted to bring on the table with you because specifically in my personal life and on social media, especially, I've been noticing that there's a growing divide and resentment going on between vaccinated and unvaccinated populations. Do you have any ideas of how we can properly engage with these populations without incurring frustration or blame, which only pushes that side further away, right? People, communities, groups are not monolithic, right? So you talk to a dozen people who specifically chose to not get the COVID vaccine, you might get 12 really different stories about how they came to that decision. So depending on where someone sits on that really big and interesting spectrum, you're gonna need to have a different conversation, right? People are, are choosing to not get vaccinated, not just because of what's inside the vial, it's all these other things around the vial, it's historical, it's faith, it's tradition, it's our ethnic background, political ideologies, it's so many things. And I think we fail at the communication and the empathy when we lump people together and oversimplify the narratives. That definitely makes a lot of sense. And I mean, that leads me into something that I was already gonna bring up. Even in my personal community, I'm from Arizona. A lot of the unvaccinated individuals that I interact with back at home, they have a family member or they themselves have had a direct, very negative experience with a vaccine. And you have written personally that shared beliefs are the global community. And sometimes we lean into these beliefs because it's the only explanation we have, right? And right. so how do we have productive discussions with these people who they directly have encountered the worst possible outcome, therefore they aren't interested in greater campaign slogans like it's your civic duty. Where there is uncertainty, we bring in conspiracy theories because they kind of act like a security blanket. It fills in the gaps, it completes the circle. So I think we have to remind ourselves of that human need, even with what might to you, to others seem absurd. And I think keeping that in mind helps us come to these conversations with empathy. So the first thing I would say is ask questions of that person and listen to them. Without understanding where they're coming from, exactly what they believe, you're painting lots of assumptions around them, right? And therefore you're not going to have a productive conversation. You know, I teach this to doctors and healthcare providers, people to a doctor or just to a friend will edit some of the information they're going to give because they also assume that you're going to think they're ridiculous or that they are not 
intelligent, right? So the first conversation, you want to make sure that people feel open enough with you to be able to share that so that you can have a productive conversation. Armor. I feel like we come in with so much armor and just ready to prove the other person wrong. But when in reality, all humans don't like being wrong. We like being listened to and valued. That is such an innate psychological need. We like our echo chambers and we like our communities of like-minded people. But conflict doesn't have to be bad. You can have good, productive conflict. We can be really different from each other, but often at the heart of it, want similar things. So whether you choose to get a vaccine or you choose to not get a vaccine, I bet you still care about good health. And I bet you still care to some extent about good governance. You might have a different definition of what that is. I bet you still care about kids being healthy and getting a good education. What is that thing that connects us all and trying to find that consensus when what it just looks like is so much difference and polarization can be so powerful in connecting people. That was very powerful. We all are looking at the same destination point, but just looking at the different paths and permutations that we can take. And so thank you so much. Thank you. You know I already changed back into my, my loungewear. Bruh. The call was so eye-opening. I mean, like, yes, I know she dropped absolute truth bombs, but her British accent definitely freaking helped. <laughs> I just thought it was really fitting to hold this call today, ironically, with my friends giving and with the holiday season coming up. It is such a time of being with your loved ones, and I know that COVID has thrown a wrench in that, and also an overarching layer of sadness for the people who can't do that because of this ongoing thing that we're navigating. And so this holiday season, maybe let's all just be a little bit more mindful as we gather with people who we haven't connected with in a long time and maybe just come from a place of more understanding and questioning and listening rather than shoving our own narratives down their throats first. All humans want at their core is to belong and be heard. And I don't think we do that to each other enough. The more that we extend that goodwill, the more that that other person, I hope and pray, will be willing to extend that goodwill to you. And now in the name of goodwill, I have to write thank you cards to put in those goodie bags you see over there. Let's see how sappy we can get. <laughs> My hand hurts so bad, but we did it, ladies and gentlemen! literally murdering this bread. If my cooking is unorthodox, don't roast me, okay? I'm on a time crunch.